Okay, let's continue on with cubic Hermitian interpolation. So I'm going to talk about the error formula for cubic, interp cubic Hermitian interpolation. So just to remind you that the Lagrange form of the remainder in a Taylor polynomial, so for example, if we approximate a function f by its third degree Taylor polynomial expanded about some point x equals a, the Lagrange form says that this error is proportional to the fourth derivative of the function f evaluated at some point c, which is between a and x, divided by 4 factorial times x minus a to the power 4. So just like the Lagrange form of the remainder in Taylor polynomial and just like the Lagrange form of the remainder in uh, Lagrange interpolation, we know that the error in cubic Hermit uh, interpolation the difference between the function we're trying to interpolate and the cubic Kermit interpolating polynomial is proportional to the node polynomial. And the node polynomial in this case is x minus tn squared and times x minus, uh, pardon me, tau n, uh, x minus tau n plus 1 squared. So the difference between f and the node polynomial is 0 at x equals tau n and it's 0 when x equals tau n plus 1. And the derivative of f, of f, namely f prime, minus the derivative of p, namely p prime, will also be 0 at x equals tau n, because this is a double 0 here. And the derivative will be 0 at x equals tau n plus 1. So we have a degree 4 condition uh, for approximating by a cubic polynomial, just as in the, in the Taylor polynomial case. And just as in the Taylor polynomial case, the there is a proportionality constant out in front, which is the fourth derivative of f evaluated somewhere in the interval divided by 4 factorial. So I want to put this in the context of what we were using before, the theta variable, and put this in the context of the, the width of the interval, the difference between tau n plus 1 and tau n. This is a formula that's valid uh, specifically for real interpolants, by the way. It's a different formula that works over the complex plane. So let's just put h equals tau n plus 1 minus tau n and define a new variable theta exactly as we did in the previous videos by x equals tau n plus h times theta. So theta is x minus tau n over h. So if we plug this in into the node polynomial, the x gets replaced by tau n plus h theta and uh, tau n plus 1 gets replaced by tau n plus h. And we simplify, so the tau n's cancel, and we get h theta all squared, so h squared theta squared, and we get h theta minus h all squared. So we can take a factor of h out of this, it's squared again, so we have h to the power 4 times theta squared times theta minus 1 squared. And we already looked at the uh, error formula on the interval from 0 to 1, uh, digging out of my pile of graphs from the from the previous one. There, there's the error curve um, for theta squared times 1 minus theta squared. Obviously, it makes no difference if I write it as theta minus 1 squared. And the maximum value of theta squared times theta minus 1 squared occurs halfway, and the value is 1 16th. So on that interval, this node polynomial is less than 1 16th. And the h to the power 4 is going to give us uh, a very powerful way to find um, ways of approximating arbitrary functions. And so just putting this all together, the difference between f of x and p of x is f to the fourth evaluated at some point c between uh, tau n and tau n plus 1 divided by 24 times h to the power 4 times this thing, which is less than or equal to 1 16th. If the fourth derivative of the function is bounded over an entire interval, then we can make the difference between f and a piecewise cubic by choosing the pieces small enough so that on each piece, the factor h to the power 4 is small enough that the error overall is small. And that's essentially saying that we can take uh, 
uh, enough subintervals on the interval a to b that we can make h to the power 4 small in every interval. They don't have to be equally spaced. You can have wider ones or little smaller ones, and you might want to do that if in this interval, for example, the fourth derivative isn't varying so much, and in this one the fourth derivative is varying a lot, so you need a smaller h to compensate for that. But frequently we take equally spaced and just take lots enough points so that this h to the power of 4 becomes uh, very small indeed. And for the example of Aryabhata's sine table, the h was uh, pi over 48. That was small enough so that we could get pi over 48 raised to the power of 4. Uh, so it's 0.06 to the power of 4. That gave us something like 10 to the minus uh, 6. And then you divide by 24, and you divide by 16, and the fourth derivative of the sine function is just the sine function again, so that's less than 1. So the fourth derivative is bounded, and it all wound up being about uh, <coughs> 5 times 10 to the minus uh, 8. I forget exactly what it was, but it was small enough so that if the data was accurate, you could get uh, 8 places of, pardon me, 7 places of accuracy. Uh, for the sign table on there. An interesting uh, take on this formula is you could actually use the just the values of sine at 0, sine at pi over 6, and sine at pi over 3, and uh, uh, just those, so, so there'd be two cubic uh, Hermitian interpolants over those two intervals, and you would get four places of accuracy for the sine function, and you can verify that for yourself by using this formula.